Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show, or, as many people are doing now, watching it. I've got a video version that is on my YouTube channel, Dieter Melhorn Fishing. Uh, you can check either one out, whichever one's most convenient for you. The great thing about the YouTube stuff now is you can leave comments right there uh, on the channel. YouTube has my comments turned back on. Thank you, YouTube. And uh, if you're on one of the traditional podcast platforms, the easiest way to get, get a hold of me is go to my website, DieterMelhornFishing.com. And uh, there in the contact section, there is a link where you can send me an email or send me a message. And uh, I can uh, hit you back up, get a lot of good ideas uh, for the show from that. So I appreciate all the feedback and uh, just all the ideas and everything else. So. What we're going to talk about today is uh, batteries, boat batteries. Um, now, I know a lot of people are going, well, I'm a bank fisherman. I'm not even going to listen to this. Well, there may be some stuff here that will help some of you bank guys uh, as far as some of your uh, electronics and stuff, especially if you're hardcore bank fisherman uh, and you're away from your vehicle and you are carrying a battery uh, to the uh, riverside or lakeside or whatever. Uh, and what we're going to talk about is lithium batteries and the traditional acid batteries uh, i'm going to go over kind of what my setup is on my boat the way i do things uh, and talk about some of the advantages disadvantages of the lithium batteries uh that's been a good little topic recently uh, i've seen it talked about online i've had some people message me and ask about it and uh it's funny i actually taped a version of this podcast already and i didn't like it and deleted it so uh, i felt i was leaving some stuff out uh in that video so i'm doing another version of it so trying to make it better before it even goes to air um uh, but here's the deal let me go over what i do on my boat and listen this is by no means the best way the only way it's what works for me and, uh, you know, I'm not the uh, uh, wealthiest fisherman in the world, so it's somewhat economical, uh, not as cheap as some routes, not as expensive as some others. But it's what I do, and it will give you a little background for the reasoning on why I do what I do with my batteries and why I choose what I choose. So on my boat, I have three batteries that have basically two different purposes uh the first one that has a distinct purpose very easy to define and anybody that has a boat a car a tractor an atv knows what it is and that's a cranking battery that is all this battery does on my boat is it cranks the boat it starts it that is all i use it for i do not have anything else tied into it there are no lights there are no electronics there's no horn there is no aerator the only thing that battery does is crank the boat. The reason I do that may or may not be obvious, but I want it charged and I want the boat to crank when I turn the key. Uh, I know that sounds very basic, but I've seen it happen way too many times. People get out there and they've got a bunch of other stuff running off their battery, maybe fishing all night and they're out there uh, and they've got their, you know, just their anchor lights on, just their running lights and you know, eight hours later to go start the boat, battery's dead because it's been running the lights all night. Or they may be running a live well, whatever the case may be. May have their sonar on. Uh, may have a radio on the boat, be running the radio. A lot of things that can lead to that cranking battery being dead when it's time to leave. That is why I have mine as a standalone battery. Now, what kind of battery do I run? It's just a regular old lead and acid battery. Uh, just a normal battery. I try to go with a higher end battery on this. The first one I had on it, uh, probably the first seven years I had the boat was a DECA, D-E-K-A. Great battery. Uh, it really didn't quit running. It just got to the point where it was pretty old and I decided to change it. And now I've got an interstate battery. Uh, that one's probably been on there six years, somewhere in that time range. Probably about time to change it out. It's a great battery. Uh, and you know, the only charging that takes place on there is, you know, what you get off of the motor when it's running. Uh, occasionally if it's sat for, uh, two or three weeks and I haven't fished, which doesn't happen too often anymore, I will throw a charger on it just to top it off to make sure everything's good. But that is the first battery and it's only purpose. I've got two other batteries. Both of them are deep cycle rechargeable marine batteries. They are also just lead acid batteries. They come from Walmart. They are the dirt cheap 
$80 Walmart batteries. One of them is just for my trolling motor and any live well or bait tank that I would put it in front of the boat. It's actually at the front of the boat near the trolling motor. Uh, that's what its purpose is. It's on its own charger, separate charging system, and uh, that's what its purpose is. The uh, other battery is toward the back, right near my cranking battery, and it ties in and powers all my electronics on the boat. Sonar, uh, radio if I'm running one, uh, my lighting, and my live well in the back of the boat. It's on its own separate charger, and uh, again, another uh, Walmart deep cycle marine battery. Uh, these things, every time I come in, I plug them back into the charger. They're on charge. Uh, it's a Pro Mariner charger that I run for both of them. And, um, uh, it's, it's, you know, that's its purpose just to keep that at a maintained level while I'm not running the boat. Um, uh, now these are only 12 volt. Let me just say that I'm trolling motor. Obviously it's 12 volt battery. Nothing strung or tied together for 24 volt. That's the way I run it. I know a lot of you guys use much bigger trolling motors, especially some folks that fish tidal waters or fish rivers with a lot of current and you're bottom bouncing, you're running 24, 36 volt. You're in a different ball game, a little different world from what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it doesn't totally compare, but some of the numbers do compare and we'll get to that in a second. Um, the popular thing that's come out uh, in the past several years has been lithium batteries. There are several different variations between lithium ion and some of the different ones out there, some progressions and what they're doing. But the bottom line is they're all basically uh, a, a, what it's sold as they're more expensive and they're have some very good advantages and a few disadvantages to them. That's kind of what I'm going to talk about. The, um, the biggest thing with the batteries that hits most people in the face, myself included, I was one of them when I saw this is the cost. The, the, the cost is, astronomical uh, 850 to a thousand dollars for a 12 volt battery comparable to the 80 dollar walmart battery that i put in my boat um, the upside to those lithium batteries is they come with a longer warranty okay when i buy a walmart battery it's got a year warranty on it and Generally speaking, I track all this. Generally speaking, I get two years out of those batteries. So, uh, you know, sometimes I'll get 18 months. Sometimes I'll get 36 months. It averages out to about two years. I've kept track of that over the years of using these things. I've only had one that has had to be returned under the warranty that went bad in less than a year. Uh, I'm not sure what the deal was with it, but wouldn't recharge. That was the only one. So, on average, I'm getting a little, about a year more than what their warranty is for. Now, the lithium batteries, I looked at several different kinds out there, several different models out there. They give you anywhere, most of them are in like an 8 to 11 year warranty. Now, that sounds good on the surface, okay? Uh, the thing I found with those warranties is there's some exclusions to them. And you'll if you're looking at lithium batteries, read the warranty details and read the exclusions to everything in them. Um, there, there's some stuff that can void out your warranty that you got to follow. These things are a little more technologically advanced and uh, there's some stuff you have to do. It's a little more to it than just plugging in a charger uh, like you would on a lead acid battery. As a matter of fact, you have to have a totally different charging system for them uh, because of the way they operate. Um, so most of them though, give you a total replacement warranty for around five years. And so basically, if that battery dies in a five-year span, it's replaced. The extend is the other part, the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 year part of the warranty either comes with a, an additional fee. One of the companies has like, you pay an additional $150 or uh, it's like a prorated deal to where depending on how old it is, it's kind of like with car tires. When they go bad, you'll get a prorated, you know, uh, price discount on it. So uh it, it's 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 a better warranty than a lead acid battery but you're also paying 10 times as much for the battery now there are some very cool features to lithium batteries uh one of the things is you can take your phone and keep track and look at it through bluetooth technology and see 
what the charge is on it, how it's depleting, all that kind of stuff. It's very, very cool. Um, you know, they, they've got some really cool technology built into them that you don't get with a, you know, regular lead acid battery. Uh, you know, the other thing is they, from what I understand, won't drain all the way dead. Uh, unlike a, a lead acid battery that you can drain, 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 drain and keep it running and it drains every bit of juice out of it and it actually damages the cells in the battery at that point. Uh, most batteries become, uh, you can't recharge them when that happens. From what I understand with lithium batteries, they won't do that. They basically shut your power off at a certain level so that you don't over drain it, which is a cool feature. It's a cool feature to have uh, so that you don't damage the battery. One of the downsides is with a lot of these batteries, there are temperature limitations and uh, you have to keep them in a temperature that doesn't get too cold. Uh, it kind of varies on some of the numbers, but below a certain point, you have to either have the battery inside, have your boat in a garage. I think they sell some heating blankets, covers, that type thing that keep those batteries in a place that a little higher temperature, something you don't have to deal with, uh, with the lead acid batteries. Uh, but the, you know, the biggest thing is the cost. That's what scares most people away is, is the cost. Now, are they worth the money? There, there's the, 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 the $64,000 golden question. Is it worth the money to spend 10 times as much on a battery? And, I think that comes down to who you are and how you fish and where you fish. Uh, for some people, uh, people who, let's say, fish a lot, you know, 300 days a year, uh, or somebody who is, you know, running, uh, you know, the, a lot of power out of these, through these things in a day. Uh, so you're bottom bouncing every day on the Mississippi River, Missouri River, and, you know, you're running trolling motor and you're really cranking the power through there might be a good advantage to buy these things. It may be worth buying them. Uh, now for somebody like me, uh, even though I fish a lot, I don't put a super high power demand on my trolling motor battery, my rechargeable trolling motor battery with the way I fish. That's just my style of fishing. Um, you know, it, 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 for me, it's the, the, the increased cost, 10 times the cost, does not make sense. I could literally buy a brand new battery every year, whether it's working or not, for 10 years and pay the same price as I would for one lithium battery. Uh, you know, obviously you wouldn't want to do that every year. That would be you know, inconvenient to swap all that stuff out, but you'd have a brand new battery at full capacity every year. Um, obviously I'm getting about two years out of them with the way I fish. So it's, you know, it's it definitely not cost effective for me to do that right now with the way I fish, change some stuff around, uh, start doing a bunch of coastal fishing, tidal waters. You're using spot lock to hover in a Creek. Uh, you know, that can be an advantage to you, uh, using spot lock to, uh, you know, basically spot anchor in a river in some current overdrop might be an advantage to you to have those, that kind of demand on it. Or if you've just got disposable income, let's face it, they're cool to have. They are lighter, um, considerably lighter than, uh, you know, any of the lead batteries. Uh, that can be very important for some of you guys that kayak fish, uh, that are fishing in the kayaks. Big advantage to have the lithium batteries in the kayaks, a lot less weight. Back to what I was saying earlier with the bank fishing folks, that actually, I know some people that put batteries on their little card, it powers a radio, some lights, all that kind of stuff. Definitely a cool thing to have there. Less stuff to drag through the woods and tote and everything else. Uh, some of you folks that use these batteries in other applications like camping and stuff, it's great having the weight savings there. So. There's some advantages and some disadvantages to them. Uh, good points and bad points, and it kind of depends on how you fish uh, and, and what you're doing. Uh, but like I said, you know, some people just want to buy it because it's cool, and that's great. Listen, it's like a lot of things in the fishing world. If it makes you feel good and gets you out there fishing, then it's really not hurting anything. It's your money. You spend it the way you want to. Um, but if you're like me, I'm a little more frugal. Uh, I, I kind of 
try to justify what I'm doing uh, to make sure that it's cost effective or has a really good purpose. I can understand paying more money to get a significant advantage. Right now, for me, I don't see the significant advantage, again, with the way I fish. For some people, there may be a significant advantage to having a lithium battery, either by the weight, uh, it's worth paying, you know, eight to ten times more for, or by, you know, just uh, having more power. Maybe the recharge time is better, uh, you know, having that longer running time out of it. It may be worth the extra money. It's kind of a decision you have to make yourself. And that's why I'm throwing all this stuff out there to ponder and to think about and just kind of give it an honest opinion. I, I, I am not sponsored by Interstate Batteries or DECA Batteries or Walmart and uh, obviously not sponsored by any of the lithium battery companies. So, uh, yeah, I have nothing to gain in any of this. Uh, but it's just some info to kind of throw out there for people to think about and consider and uh, but as it comes up, comes up repeatedly, there's good info out there, there's bad info, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's definitely something you look at, you think about, and you look at the way you're fishing, and uh, just what your budget is. I mean, the bottom line, let's face it, guys, uh, we can get by just fine with a good old Walmart battery. It may not be ideal, it may weigh more, but it'll work. Uh, you know, it's nice if you've got the extra money to buy that, you know, that premium lithium battery. Uh, I, I'm sure that anybody that buys one and has the money to do it doesn't have to go into debt to get one of these things will be happy with what they get i think they will be excited the technology is exciting it's just cool to look at stuff on your phone like that and see where it's at see how it's charged and see how much you got left you know that's one of the things on my battery i don't really know how much i've got left i can go up there and hit the button on my trolling motor and it gives me you know 25 percent increments but you never know how close you are to the end of the rope uh well you know with the using the um, bluetooth technology uh with the lithiums that's cool uh but yeah I, I think anybody that gets one uh will be happy with it they'll enjoy it and uh you know i'll probably have them one day i'm sure the price point on these things will adjust to where they're a little more affordable uh a few more options more and more people come into the game and uh probably something to have to do, you know, at some point right now i don't and that's cool uh you know we'd love to hear some feedback from you guys that have them uh i doubt there's anybody that has gotten them and gotten rid of them uh if you have please leave me a comment i would love to hear why you got rid of them that would be very shocking for me to hear that somebody actually got rid of these things what they had them but uh yeah that's the feedback on this thing uh you know my take on it what i've seen uh just in looking at them, and uh, we might be circling back here in a couple years, and I'll be giving you a play-by-play -play on putting some new lithium batteries in the boat. But for now, Walmart's my buddy, and uh, I think I'd just look before I take this, and I think the two uh, deep cycle Walmart batteries are now past their two-year mark, so uh, they're you know probably you know getting ready to die at any point. So that'll probably be the irony in doing this podcast and this video that. My trolling motor battery is going to die tomorrow, but that is what it is. So that's it for now, guys. I'm going to get out on the water and uh, we'll catch you guys out there on the water fishing. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.